Gotta kiss you with oh, the Hundred percent smothered. It's a slaughter. It's a slaughter. Me, Cody, and Manny. It's a slaughter. What's good YouTube now before I get into the secret about the 91 driving layup and the 92 midi I gotta break down what these attributes are allowing me to do So the first thing I want to start off with is the lost art of the mid-range So as I've talked about in previous videos a lot of people a lot of defenses They really look to play like the three-point line and the slip like right under the basket so once you incorporate like a real good mid-range game as a guard you'll notice that it kind of makes the defense play at your own mercy so even right here with this clip one of the things you'll see is like when i drive towards the middle i kind of use patience to force the center to decide whether he's going to guard me or the slip so right here i wait to see what he's going to do you see he backs up at the slip which opens up my shot but let's say in a situation let's say he steps up to a mid-range or my floater even if i take that shot and miss he has to fully commit which makes him lose lose out on the box out which will leave a free board for my big man and also one of the biggest things about utilizing the mid-range is because as a guard it'll turn you into a three level threat you'll be able to score at the three point line you'll be able to score in the mid-range and you'll also be able to score under the basket even right here this dot right here i want to break it down without a 91 driving layup and a 92 mid-range this assist here doesn't happen nine times out of ten if you play guard and like you dribble behind screens you know anytime you drive right here most times the corner defender is only gonna try and reach like reach for the ball like try and go for a steal most times the corner defender is never gonna try and jump behind you to get a block nine times out of ten they'll let the center like put their hands up and try and get a contest at it and fight for the board but right here since i have a 91 driving layup and a 92 mid and they've seen i've done pull-ups and floaters this corner decides that he's gonna fully commit and go for a block so basically it makes the corner defender have to fully commit to my drive right here and it opens up a dot for me so me being able to score on all three levels of the floor not only makes me a threat it also opens up the court for my teammate so even with this clip right here you guys probably thought oh i just made a simple pass to an open shooting guard but you have to really notice that the fact that i can shoot mid ranges and floaters is what opens that up so i pretend as if i'm about to attack the middle and what do you notice he tries to pinch at it so that he can like try and get a bump or either get a steal on it and also notice the center completely leaves my center alone and steps over to the elbow because he's anticipating for me to go for a floater so him as a big he's trying to get under my floater and then go up for a contest so since i'm able to do all of this it opens up my shooting guard pass but not only that it causes this corner defender to make a decision so either my center is going to have a free box out and be able to get a free rebound or he'll be able to get my corner over here will be able to get an open shot as you can see right here so some of you might be wondering why can't you just go with only one attribute like just have a 91 driving layup and you only use floaters or just have a 92 mid-range and go for pull-ups well the reason for that is because you have a small window to decide what you're going to do in the mid-range whether that be a floater a mid-range pull-up or a layup whatever you're going to do but since you have that small window to decide understand the center also has a small window to decide what he's gonna do when you go into the mid-range as well so having this versatile game in the mid-range is it's gonna make you more of a threat and less predictable when you do end up getting into the middle of the court so i'll break it down right here for you guys you're gonna see in this possession right here as i'm going for the floater usually the time where i'm holding my right stick down and like making the animation pop up will usually be by the free throw line or right above it or right below it another thing that's really important about it too is that when you're releasing the ball you're gonna see you're usually gonna 
already be in the paint like you're gonna jump from the free throw line forward so you're kind of moving closer to the defense when you're doing your floaters so you'll notice right here he doesn't play any defense it's a wide open floater so now as i'm doing these floaters after i get like two open ones the big man is gonna have to like adjust to that in order for the center to like defend my floater he probably has to anticipate it so he has to try and get under me right before i'm gonna do the floater or as i'm doing it and then try and go up for a contest the defender can't be far away from me then get a late contest to try and stop the floater so now on this possession right here you're gonna see i'm dribbling trying to beat the first defender i'm able to get their center or power forward to step up at me so now i go around the first defender now if i go for a floater right here like how i was explaining before i might fly like closer into the defense like if i try to do a floater by the free throw line right here the floater animation is going to push me towards the defense and then he'll be under me and be able to jump up to get a contest so now since i have a 92 mid range and he's under the free throw line i'm able to have an open look right here above the free throw line so now since you've made yourself a threat with the floaters and the mid ranges you're gonna see right here once i beat the first defender the center has to decide whether he's gonna play under the free throw line to try and stop me from like doing a floater or if he's gonna step above the free throw line to play a jump shot either at the mid range or the three point line so now once you get the center to step above the free throw line it leaves the paint wide open for you to go for a layup and now at this point it should either be a open layup for you or if the off if a off ball defender tries to like contest or help you have an easy pass to make to one of the corners but also since they're coming out to your layup late you're still able to you know finish what finesse finishes with a 91 driving layup even right here you'll see once you get their big man or power forward to step above the free throw line it opens up the paint for you to be able to use your 91 driving layup you can see once you have him a step above the free throw line you're always going to be faster than him so once you can get by him and get to the lane right here you'll see i'm using my fearless finisher giant slayer and badges like that to be able to finish at the rack most people that have a high driving layup aren't able to utilize it as much because they don't have the mid-range game or the three-point shot to make the defender step all the way out and open up like little crevices and openings in the paint for you to be able to utilize and also another big reason as to why I have both the 92 mid range with the 91 driving layup is because sometimes if you go for a floater and it accidentally gives you a dribble pull up you'll still be able to hit it because one you have a 92 midi half midi magician and half open look so your green window in the mid range is a lot better especially like when you're running out of stamina because you know if you have a build with like a 77 mid range and you're running low on stamina it becomes a lot harder to hit a mid range that is either contest contested or like fake contested where the defender might show their face a little bit they might like step at you but not even put their hand up like even right here with this possession that i just showed you'll see this kind of shot if you have a 77 mid-range you might not even take this shot because you feel like they might step at you but since i have a 92 mid-range i have badges like hall of fame guard up hall of fame midi magician you're gonna see most people aren't really like looking to contest the mid-range you can see this defender right here is just trying to reach at my ball hand i beat the first defender and then the big man has to decide whether he's actually going to contest my mid range. And the thing is, most centers, they just want to like bait you and then play for the rebound. Because if he actually goes for a contest right here, it might put him in a long animation. And then my big man will be able to go for a free rebound. This 92 mid range, it really allows you to be a lot more confident all over the court because now you're not one dimensional in the fact that you're just gonna three hunt and look for whenever your big man is open under the basket to throw a pass now you can create the three-point line you can create at the mid-range and once they step in all two of those levels like levels of scoring now the paint is going to be open for you to utilize your 91 driving layup so now once you make yourself a threat on all three levels of the court 
it's almost impossible for the defense to guard all of that and to not leave one of your teammates open. You have four different options of how you could score. Three of them is you shooting and one of them is passing. So it's impossible for the defense to guard all of that and all they can really do is basically to pick their poison. And even in the NBA, the best people, like the best scores are those type of players that you just have to pick your poison with them and just have to give them something and see if they're willing to take it. And on 2k being a guard like that is really what separates you from just being an average guard and like one of the best so now i'm gonna show you guys the secret about the 91 driving layup and the 92 mid-range but before i show you this i want you guys to see what midi magician says boost the effectiveness of pull-ups and spin shots from the mid-range area i want you guys to remember that right there so now i'm gonna show you a few street ball clips from when i was grinding my badges on this player and you're gonna see right here i do a regular floater i'm just trying to you know up my pro touch badge and you're gonna see right here midi magician pops up with float game even though i just showed y'all I literally just showed you it says boost the effectiveness of pull-ups and spin shots so before when i made this build i didn't know this was a thing like the badge like the float game badge stacks with midi magician i don't know if it depends on the distance or the range from where you do the floaters but the fact that this is happening hey it, it's a plus for my build you're gonna see right here pro touch slithery midi magician and float game pops up so four different badges is pop popping up for this and even right here you're gonna see i don't even do a floater i do a scoop layup i'm grinding for the scooper badge and you're gonna see what pops up fearless finisher gold pro touch midi magician and scooper pops up so like even this clip right here i showed in the beginning i don't know if i was able to make this 100 percent contested because of like my mid range in combination with that layup. Cause you guys can see right here, as I'm going up for the layup, my green window is big and then it fluctuates down. Man, I can't even, yo bro, can y'all see the green window on that? Cause I can't see that. So I don't know how I was able to green it. I, I might have to do it in slow motion real quick to see if it popped up at the last second yeah i don't even see the green window pop back up so this me making this is kind of crazy maybe it's because i had 98 percent takeover but but yeah man put that 91 driving layup in that 92 midi if you want me to drop this 6-4 build video be sure to leave a like so that this video gets pushed in the algorithm and leave a comment in the comment section below but in the meantime check out my last video where i tell you about three glitches that you don't know about in nba 2k24